his eye. Hey everyone, glad to see you back, glad to see you looking fresh. Dragon Ball Z, it just might be the most important anime of all time. And I'm not just saying that now because I've seen it, and I feel like I have some kind of authority to speak about it in a different way. Actually, quite the opposite. I still feel like quite the outsider when it comes to this franchise for whatever reason. Even though now I've experienced the entirety of the original series and now Dragon Ball Z, I feel like there's something missing. I don't know what it exactly is. I think it might just be that I didn't watch it as a kid. I think watching it now as an adult, I didn't get to experience it as a kid, and so I missed out on some of that total attachment. And obviously, this college to place in a huge part with something like this, but honestly, I still felt very connected to a lot of these characters once I was done. I mean, watching a show for almost 300 episodes with an additional 150 episode series in front of it will do that to somebody. Well, about 450 episodes later, and I finally been able to meet Goku and Chi Chi and Bulma, Krillin, the Ox King. Oolong and Master Roshi and Turtle and all these great characters in Dragon Ball and then all of a sudden here we are in Dragon Ball Z and we get to meet more icons like Vegeta and Raditz even and Nappa and Cell and Frieza and Android 17, Android 18, Android 16, Android 19, Android 20, Majin Buu, Kid Buu. There's so much iconography here. There's so many great characters here. There's also a lot of not so great characters here as well. But there are so much to talk about with Dragon Ball Z that it's impossible to even start, I feel like. But I'll start from where this starts and we get to meet Goku's kid Gohan. And Gohan is a character that grows tremendously throughout the length of this show. Honestly, I feel like it's Gohan's show a lot of the time. Uh, Dragon Ball was Goku's show. Dragon Ball Z is Gohan's show. Without the attachment as a kid, honestly, I didn't even know Gohan was this important to the entire show. I knew he was Goku's kid from when I started, but I never even thought that he would play this big of a role in it. And his connection with Piccolo right up front is some fantastic stuff. He transforms Piccolo from this evil tyrant into such a great character that he has one of the best arcs over the entire show and right up front we get to deal with new and crazy things because Raditz comes down and he's a Saiyan from space and all of a sudden the introduction of different planets and new species comes into play here because all of Dragon Ball Goku is just a a weird kid with a tail. He could transform into a big ape. For this world, that wasn't that crazy, right? There was a lot of normal people, but people could shoot beams out of their hands, and there are people with three eyes, and there are just dragon people, and no one really seems to mind. It's just how the world is. So a kid with a monkey tail that can turn into a big ape, whatever. It's a bit dangerous, but it's not anything out of the ordinary. But to understand that he is an alien from a different planet... And all of them can do it. And now they've come to take him. It's a That's a big deal. And the introduction of other planets is probably the reason that this became an entire new show. Because the power jump is insane. It's absolutely insane. Because if you look at Piccolo at the end of Dragon Ball. And he's this indestructible big bad. And then you look at Piccolo at the end of Dragon Ball Z. And he is unable to compete with Majin Buu. But I'm getting a little out of order here. The Saiyan saga is the shortest saga. It, it, I wouldn't say it's the most iconic, but there are so much iconographies in this. Such as the classic, it's over 9,000 meme that was around forever. And even I knew about it. Weirdly enough, that was the only episode I'd seen before watching all of this. As a kid, I remember flipping through and I'm probably not a kid I was probably a teenager at that point Dragon Ball was on and I recognized I'm like this looks like the meme this looks like the area from the meme is this the meme episode and I saw him do the glasses uh, that was when the dub said 8,000 though so that was strange I know this show has been dubbed over multiple times when I saw it it was the it's over 8,000 so that was a bit underwhelming but this time I watched you know, Funimation and I assume it's dubbed again and I got the it's over nine thousand, so that was that was great. <laughs> Straight up, that was the only reason I watched the show. And then of course after the Saiyan saga, we get the Frieza saga, 
It's a lot of people's favorite sagas. It's the one where Vegeta starts to turn to the good side. And we get to go to Planet Namek, see Piccolo's people. I don't know what it was about this. I didn't particularly love this arc as much as everyone else does. I find it that being on Planet Namek and not on Earth takes the characters and to put them into a new place, but it doesn't give me the same kind of urgency as, oh no, the Earth is going to blow up, as, oh no, Namek is going to blow up. But then, of course, it does give them the ability to just blow up Planet Namek and actually give stakes and show how terrifying Frieza can be, so it's here or there. Frieza's great. Frieza's another character that shows up multiple times, and... I, th I think he's great. He's obviously fantastic in his debut, and he shows off what transformations are. And, of course, at the end of this, we finally get to see Super Saiyan, and that was phenomenal. I knew it was coming a mile away, and even I was still blown away at how incredibly exciting it was to see Goku transform into Super Saiyan for the first time. I think after that, the show struggles a little bit with Super Saiyan 2 and Super Saiyan 3 to try to capture that same kind of excitement, but nothing will beat seeing him go for the first time that was that was so cool and then obviously having vegeta do it later and the future trunks saga with the androids this is a bit more choppy we get to introduce android 18 which are a lot of people's favorite character and android 17 who he's great as well and android 16 who i seen i enjoyed not as much he looks very different from a lot of other characters in this show uh, he's a very strange look to him He's not bad. You know, I don't mind Android 16. There's Android 19 and 20, who are the villains. Well, I believe the other androids are too. There's a lot of android talk, because Cell is also an android, and he absorbs people, and that's a whole weird thing. The Cell saga feels a lot like the Frieza saga again, in that once we're done actually talking about androids, all of a sudden there's another big bad here, and we all have to stop him. And this is the point of the show where I was like, alright, I get where all these arcs are going to end up. The Cell games... I knew about. I didn't know what the Cell games particularly were. I thought they were going to be a string of actual games, but it turns out it's a tournament, and the tournament is only two people. Let's fight Cell and see who wins. And we finally get to see Gohan surpass even his father. I'm sure a lot of people love that. I didn't mind it, per se. I just wasn't super attached to Gohan even still at this point. I was like happy for him, but I feel like it took away the whole point of like Cell as this indestructible bad guy, and to have... Gohan be the one to take him out. I feel like if I had to look deeper into it, it's like Gohan didn't know he had the power within him. Goku knew that he could probably take him down, as well as himself being able to take it down. So he just had faith in his son, let his son do it, to show that there are other heroes and there can be more than just him. Maybe that's it. Maybe I just figured it out. Maybe I like it more now. But an interesting discussion there as well. And then, of course, after Cell is finally defeated, we have the Boo Saga. Which is the most shaky saga. We meet a character named Mr. Satan in the, the Cell Saga who takes all the credit for defeating Cell so he becomes super rich and famous. And he uses that power to help defeat Boo as well as befriending Boo. So I feel like they brought a really annoying character and then they really made it a lot better. Because they also gave him a daughter in Videl. And I really liked Videl in the Great Saiyaman Saga. That was a bit strange. But Videl is pretty good as well. Having these characters super late in the, the show as well all get introduced and have great backstories and it all works out super well. And Majin Buu is a good villain. I like Majin Buu's first form. Kid Buu is very annoying. I do not like Kid Buu. I get it's like, oh, that's just the evil side of Buu. So like the big squishy one. He's not evil totally there's an evil part of him but he can be big and goofy and enjoyable but the evil side of him is what makes him do it and that's just how we have to defeat and defeating him is long and you know once that's done i felt like it was a perfect place to wrap up i also feel like the show could have really wrapped up after the cell saga perfectly fine giving gohan a love interest and having uh, mr satan and boo they're all really good characters i really enjoy all of them being here now so no complaints. Oh, I even forgot to mention that, like, when I said mentioned Future Trunks and, like, Bulma and Vegeta got together and they had a kid, which I found strange. There's Baby Trunks for a good bit. And I love Baby Trunks because of how grumpy he looks all the time. He's just a grumpy little baby. So he grows up to be a kid. But then they give Goku another kid when he's dead because he dies after the Cell games. And he is Goten. 
I don't have necessarily a problem with. I have mixed feelings on Goten. He's all right. He's just another kid. He looks exactly like Goku. And I feel like they made him just so they could have the fusion thing. And the fusion thing is weird. It makes go tanks, and go tanks is super annoying. I do not like go tanks at all. I'm down for fusion. I think fusion is a cool addition. But this arc introduced fusion and Super Saiyan three at the same time, so that's where it gets a bit messy for me. But still, seeing this entire franchise and how this ends, I don't really like how it ends. I don't know other people's opinions. I do not like Oob. I don't hate Oob. I just don't like him that much. I think they kind of butcher Goku by being like, oh, we haven't seen him in five years. He's like reclusive. He never comes and hangs out. And now he's going to leave again to go hang out with this and train this kid he just met. Part of me is like, oh, that's something Goku would do. But I feel like that by doing that, it just rips away all of Goku's character growth. And he doesn't have anything. He's just like, oh, I'm leaving. Okay. It would make more sense if they're like, oh, Oob's coming and live with us. And he's going to pretend like he made Oob like leave his family and friends and all that to come live with him but obviously i've seen oob for a total of three episodes and that's it yeah overall dragon ball z obviously it's great it's long and the pacing is something else <laughs> pacing is quite slow i might watch dragon ball kai at some point i don't know not anytime soon because i just experienced this story and i don't really want to watch it again right now while it's great you know i don't need to delve right back into it so, on to Super from here, I guess. And I can't wait to see where it goes from there. Uh, a lot of people have mixed feelings on Super. I can't wait to check it out. I can't wait to experience what it is firsthand. Because I know next to nothing about it. Because I, I know about Beerus. And I know he's got a guy with a stick with him. That's about it. The Broly, the Broly movie didn't tell me much about what happened in Super. Other than there's a tournament at some point. So... I'm excited to see Super, and I hope it's good. Like I said, a lot of people have mixed feelings. I don't know if that's from nostalgia talking or if that's them saying the show is actually bad. It's going to be a huge quality jump, at least. The colors are going to be brighter, I feel like, at least. So that'll be cool. I will record my thoughts after I'm done with Super. So that is part two of this Dragon Ball retrospective as I go through it. And yeah, I look forward to Super. I don't remember if I rated Dragon Ball or not, but so far I've given them both eights. I, I find them about the same quality. I liked them about the same. For different reasons. That'll about do it for me. As always, like this if you like this. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you at some point.